Click jacking or UI redressing is a technique that tricks users into clicking on unintended elements and in this video we're going to break down how this attack works and solve a lab. As always, if you enjoy the video, don't forget to like and subscribe and let's dive straight in. The core components of click jacking is the use of iframes. This is an HTML element that allows the embedding of an external web page within the current page. Even now, I'm sure you can imagine how that might be dangerous. To pull off this attack though, we overlay the content of a legitimate website with malicious content, essentially creating a frame around what the user can see. This technique is called framing, and with a little CSS to modify the transparency, a user will think that they're clicking on something legitimate, but actually interacting with the content of the iframe. There are some famous examples of this attack. Both Facebook and Twitter have had their like and follow buttons clickjacked, and also Steam had a fake login page that was laid over the top of the real login page to capture credentials. But click jacking attacks are often subtle and go unnoticed, so it's likely that there are also many undocumented cases. Now, whilst this attack might not be something that you see very often, it's important as web app pen testers or security engineers to understand the context in which this attack can appear. If you want to understand how to defend against this attack, it's worth checking out the X-Frame options and CSP headers. Now let's take a look at the lab. So here we are at the Portswigger Academy and it says that this lab contains login functionality and a delete account button that is protected by a cross-site request forgery token. A user will click on elements that display the word click on a decoy website. To solve the lab, craft some HTML that frames the account page and fools the user into deleting their accounts. The lab is solved when the account is deleted. And we have some credentials of our own as well. So let's dive in. So here we have our lab and all we're gonna do is click my accounts and log in with Vina and Peter. And we can see we have the account page and this delete account button is what we're targeting. So if we head to the exploit server, the first thing we want to set up is we need an iframe. So we're just gonna go iframe source equals and we'll use the link from the my accounts page and if we click view exploit you'll see that we do indeed get this iframe so let's come back and style this a little bit so we're just going to come to the top open up some css and then we're going to do iframe like this so in here, we want a position. So I'm just going to use position relative and then give it a width of a thousand pixels because it was a little small and a height of a thousand pixels as well. And then I want to set the opacity to 0 0.1. And then I'm going to set the Z index to two as well. And this is because we're going to set the Z index of the div or the item that we want our user to focus and click on to the Z index of one. So we can click view exploit again and we can see just about that we have our page and it actually is asking us to log in. So I'm just going to log in with our credentials again so that we can see the account page. Obviously, when the user loads this, they'll already have their session token. So they'll hit the account page rather than login page. But in our case, we just needed to log in. So I'm just going to come back. And if I change the opacity to, let's say, 0.5, you can probably see this a little bit more clearly. So let's leave it at that. Now here, we want to overlay the click me div over the account button. So let's start by adding the div. Click me. Click view again, and you can see it appears at the top. So we need to style this. And this time, what we're gonna do is we're going to position it absolute. So position absolute. And then we're gonna say top 100 pixels, and then left, let's say 50 pixels, and see where it is on the page. And you can see it lands a little bit here, so we need it to be much further down. So I'm just going to come back, change this to 500, click view, and it's very, very close. So I'm just going to give it an extra 20 pixels, 
And I think that's about close enough. So if you notice when we hover over click me, the icon changes so that if you click on this, it's actually going to click the delete account button. But obviously we don't want to delete our own account. So I'm not gonna go ahead and click it just yet. So next up, all we do is we click store and then we click deliver exploit to victim and we get a congratulations, you solved the lab. So that was fairly straightforward, but in reality, we may have to work a little bit harder to entice our users. So there's actually a tool that we can use that is built into Burp Suite where we can test and quickly create payloads. So all I'm gonna do is come over to Burp Suite and click Burp and click Click Bandit. And here we have a tool for generating clickjacking attacks. So the steps to do this are to copy the click bandit to clipboard. We paste it into the page in our browser, and then we follow the on-screen instructions. So here I'm just gonna copy click bandit to clipboard, come back to our page, and I'm gonna come to the My Account page, hit Control Shift C, come over to console, and just paste here and click enter. Now I'm gonna close the console and you can see that we have a new banner at the top. So I'm just going to click disable click actions because I want to be able to click the delete account button without actually deleting our accounts. And then I'm gonna click start. And here I just come through and I click home, my accounts, logouts, update email and delete accounts. And then just click finish. And what it's gonna do, it's gonna go through and test this. So we can click, 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 click. And we see that we have been clickjacked. And here, if we want to save the payload to review and tweak probably a little bit and carry out the attack, we can just click save and we can save the HTML document to our file system. So in our lab, our user was a little bit of a dummy. They're going to click on anything that had the keyword click in it. In reality, of course, we might need to try a little bit harder to entice our users, but this was still a good demo of how to pull off this attack. There are plenty more labs available, such as clickjacking with pre-filled input forms, bypassing frame busting scripts, and combining clickjacking and cross-site scripting. So check those out if you want to learn more. There's also a great post over on the Auth0 blog that I'd recommend checking out. And of course, clickjacking is covered by the OWASP Cheat Sheet series, a resource that we've mentioned once or twice in our more recent videos. All in all, if you're interested in attacking users, it's definitely a technique that's worth investigating further. And that's it for this video. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you have an idea for a topic you'd like to see in the future, then leave it in the comments below. Catch you next time.